Brothers and sisters, just a quick reminder, you may want to silence your cell phones uh, just so that uh, during the services it doesn't go off. that he was with the hospice and that he and Arlen became very good friends oh, as you introduced him. Talk. Then that's all you need to do. Okay. grandson I'll be conducting today. Today we will start off with opening song, How Firm a Foundation, number 85, followed by Invocation by Chaplain Joe. Next will be the obituary reading by Stacy Larson. And then next we will have a speaker, Chantel Smith, talking about memories. And then that will be the, then we'll go from to that point of the program. Thank you.
Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for um, your presence in our lives, um, regardless of what is happening, the joys and the sorrows, um, our losses, our grief. You have promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And as we come together today, Lord, we are um, remembering Arland and the, uh, the blessing and the influence that he's had in our life, his legacy, um, his presence. And dear Lord, we would just ask that today that you would be with us in a very special way, that you would bring comfort to those that are mourning and uh, even a, a sense of joy because of the promise of resurrection. And so um, we ask that you would bless us and that you would be with us during our time together as we remember Harlan, as we share happiness and share tears, as we share memories. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Arlen Robert Green, 84, of Orem, Utah, passed away peacefully in the loving care of his wife, Donna Dean Green, and many wonderful caretakers on March 27, 2022. Born January 21st, 1938, in America Fork, to the son of Franklin William Greening and Emma Bench Greening. On February 10th, 2007, Arlen married the love of his life, Donna Dean, in the Mount Timpanogos Temple. As a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Arlen served in various church callings throughout his life, including a mission to the Great Lakes. Arlen enjoyed sports, and looked forward to every Tuesday where he played basketball with his three good friends. He enjoyed traveling around the world and spending time with family and friends. <laughs> we would like to express our sincere appreciation to Yarrow Hospice, Point Meadows, Courtyard at Jamestown, and Ride at Home for providing excellent care and kindness by going above and beyond for Arlen. Arlen is survived by his wife, Donna, children, Stephen Greening, Tony Greening, John Whitehead, Jeff Whitehead, Crystal Smith, Stacy Larson, 13 grandchildren, and eight great-grandchildren. He is preceded in death by his parents, 11 siblings, and his previous wife, Ardeth, and his daughter, Shauna. A public viewing will be held Thursday, March 31st, 2022, from 6 to 8 p.m. at Anderson and Sons Mortuary, 49 East, 100 North in American Fork. Please join us following the, for the funeral, on the link on Anderson's webpage at 11 on Friday, the 1st of April. Hi, my name is Chantel Sauer and I am the oldest grandchild. I'm going to go over some memories. Grandma and I went to lunch one day. <laughs> Sorry. This was right after her high school reunion. She was so excited to tell me what happened at this high school reunion. This is where her and Arlen reunited and they decided they were going to go on a date. I had never seen my grandma so excited in my life. <laughs> um, she was going to be hanging out with her childhood friend, and then she began to tell me 
how her and Arlen grew up together, and they went to elementary school together, and how they were the best of friends. And they had remained friends throughout their life, and now the timing in their life has brought them back together. And that was the first time that I had heard about Arlen. So I was very excited about my grandma, for my grandma. Uh, grandma and Arlen, they were tickled that my son and daughter made them great grandparents. And with that, they love to spoil their grandchildren and their great grandchildren. Uh, going out to grandma's house when she lived in Tooele, she was dating Arlen, and being out there, he would leave her the cutest messages on her answering machine. <laughs> this would make her day. She would light up, and I had never seen her that happy before, because she was just excited that not just a friend, but this man was her soulmate, was back into her life. So Grandma and Arlen, Grandpa, they got married, and they went on many adventures. They loved to travel, and making memories was huge. Our family was everything, and is everything. He couldn't tell us enough how much he loved Grandma, the love of his life. He only had wished that they had been able to get together sooner. He couldn't tell us enough how much he loved all of us and how he was proud of all of us for everything that we were accomplishing in our lives. Holidays are always our family get-togethers. We love to have big family parties. We do a luau barbecue, our Halloween party that gets very competitive. We always have contests <laughs> where we will have costume contests, pumpkin carving contests, and it was always a competition on who had the best. My dad always won. <laughs> birthdays, we would always do something for everybody's birthday. No one's birthday ever got missed. Christmas was always special. He never let me not know that Christmas is a special day, but it was also it's also my birthday. So he always made sure, made a point to tell me how special I was. With all of our family get-togethers, we always had our family dinners at least once a month. And regardless of whose house it was at, Arlen always loved to be a part of the cooking. He was always eager to help. Not just with the cooking, but also cleanup. Our Disneyland vacation was a fond memory for my kids. Getting to go to the ocean for the first time and Disneyland for the first time will be one that we will never forget. Every time we saw Arlen, he always shook your hand, gave you a hug, and sincerely asked you how you were doing. Thank you, Arlen, for coming back into my grandma's life and spending those years with her. I know that she felt the same that she wishes that you would have come into her life sooner and spent more years together, but those years that you guys had together were very special and she will cherish them forever. Thank you for being a part of our family. You will be missed. We love you. And we will never forget all of the fun memories and the fun times that we always had together. The love of your life, Grandma. Our family is so tight-knit that we will always be here for her and we will watch over her while you are gone. We love you and thank you for making all of those memories with our family.
Next on the program, we will have speaker Ron Ryman. Let's talk, done by Todd Smith. Uh, next, we will have speaker Connie Haas. Oh, excuse me. Um, we will have, after Todd Smith, we will have the musical number um, by Kathleen Boswell. Then we will have speaker Connie Haas. And then closing remarks will be done by Crystal Smith, followed by a closing song, God Be With You Till We Meet Again, number 152, with a benediction done by Chantel Sauer. Um, and then, and that is the end of the, the program at the time. Hi, I'm Todd Smith. I'm Arlen's son-in-law. And it's a privilege to be able to um, give this talk for Ron, uh, the family. We would all like to thank Ron and Jackie for their kind and genuine friendship. We'd like to express our heart, heartfelt sorrow for their loss at this time. And so I'll be reading Ron's talk. Harlan was truly sincere in his relationships with others. He knew the true meaning of the word friend. He had a special gift of making those around him feel important. He knew how to light up a room with laughter as he often shared funny stories. These stories was, were often childhood memories. Such was the story of a time when he was three years old. His twin brothers promised him a quarter if he would ride down the main street of American Fork without a stitch of clothing on. <laughs> Needless to say, he attracted the attention of a police officer who promptly escorted him home and after a stern lecture made each brother pay Arlen a quarter. He truly lived by these words, I am only one, but still I am one. I cannot do everything but still, I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do, some, to do something I can do. Arlen was always willing to serve and show his talents. It may be using the skills he acquired while cooking in the National Guard that gave him the ability to prepare a great meal for scout campouts, war dinners, or sometimes he would just bring a friend a delicious potato casserole. His 50 plus years of weekly basketball games with his friends became such an unusual achievement that the local newspapers and the church news did a write up about this remarkable friendship. The statement was made that as the years passed, it was probably more about getting together to eat lunch rather than shoe baskets. Arlen put all of his basketball experience to good use when he volunteered to coach my granddaughter's junior jazz team for two years running. Although it was not so much about how to shoot a basket, it was more about how to have fun and enjoy the friendships. He traveled the world, enjoying the many beauties and realities of travel. After all, how many of us would be able to continue a vacation with a positive attitude when a pickpocket had just escaped with his wallet leaving him in a foreign country without ID and credit cards. It all made for a good story when he returned home. Arlen will always be remembered by so many as one who demonstrated unconditional love for all. In my view, Arlen Greening was a man for all seasons. Thank you.
I'm grateful to be here with you today. Uh, I'm also grateful for the opportunity that I have to pay a special tribute to Arlen Greening, whom we honor today. Arlen was to me a special brother-in-law, a great example, and a lifelong dear friend. As I thought of Arlen and the opportunity to, to speak today of him and his life, one word came to my mind. That word was dedicated. I feel that the word dedicated is a special compliment to him. Arlen was dedicated to righteousness and goodness all of his mortal life. Arlen was dedicated to serving the Lord and to the gospel. He was dedicated to serving our country and he was dedicated to Donna and family. So today I'd like to pay honor to him for being a dedicated servant to God, country, and family. May I share a feeling about Arlen being dedicated to those three things, God, country, and family. Arlen had a strong testimony of the gospel. He served well in the church all of his life. As a young man, he served a successful mission to the Michigan Great Lakes Mission. And during his life, he held many callings in the church and he learned to love those people he served and he learned to love those who served with him. Arlen also loved to serve our country. He was a member of the National Guard for 28 years and he learned to be a chef while serving in the Guard. He was a master chef. He loved cooking. There were times when I would call their home and Donna simply would say, Arlen is busy making dinner. Arlen was also dedicated to family. He and Donna wanted to be sealed for time and all eternity, and they were sealed in the Mount Timpanogos Temple. Arlen loved Donna with all his heart. He was always kind and helpful to her. He made such a difference in her life. I was able to visit their home the day before Arlen passed away, and it was so tender to be with them. Donna would sit right close to him and softly hold his hand. She spoke quietly in his ear with encouraging words. He even opened his eyes for her as she tenderly rubbed his face and spoke kind, loving words to him. It was beautiful. We need to pay tribute also to Donna's daughters as they provided so much physical and emotional help to Donna during all of this difficult time. As we experience the pain that comes with death of someone we love, we need to remember that our mourning is one of the deepest expressions and ways that we show our love. The Lord said, Thou shalt live together in love, insomuch that thou shalt weep for the loss of them that die. Even as we mourn at the death of Arlen, we can receive comfort because of the gospel. We know that death is a basic part of our eternal lives. We know that we cannot go on with the great work that lies ahead without stepping over the threshold of death, even though it is so sorrowful for those who remain. It helps us when we have a solid conviction Concerning the reality of eternal life, that can bring us a sense of peace. We know of Heavenly Father's plan for us. We know that we lived in the pre-mortal world and we chose to come to earth so that we could gain a body and become like our Father in Heaven. We know that coming to earth was necessary for us and there would be some difficult things while we were here. We also knew we would have a Savior who would atone for us and make it possible for us to be forgiven for the wrong choices that we might make. Because of our Savior, Jesus Christ, His atonement and resurrection, there is hope beyond this life. Arlen wanted those good things and he worked diligently. He was dedicated 
to living so that he could merit those blessings. Now our job is to follow his example. Let us live as he did. Let us set our objectives and goals on being dedicated ourselves. Let us be happy and grateful because we know that as we keep the commandments and make and keep sacred covenants, we can live with those we love forever. President Gordon B. Hinckley wrote a poem about death. This is what he said. What is this thing that men call death? This quiet passing in the night? Tis not the end, but genesis of better worlds and greater light. How grateful we can be for the peace the gospel brings. How grateful we can be for Arlen's righteous, dedicated example. How grateful we are for Donna and her ability to carry forth now and prepare to be together forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I am Crystal Smith, Arlen's daughter and Donna's daughter. Arlen, Arlen was born in American Fork on a snowy winter day, January 21st, 1938. <clears throat> this new bundle of joy was to be the last child born to Franklin and Emma Greening. Arlen's early years were full of fun and carefree days. He loved playing with friends, cousins, and neighbors. We have all heard of the story of how he earned his first 25 cents. When Arlen was growing up, he was taught not to play with matches. Sometimes his mother told him never to do that, son. One day, curiosity got the best of him. The spark struck, and in no time, the garage went up in flames. He was so scared, he went and hid. He knew that if his older siblings found him, he was in big trouble. So he hid and waited for his mother to get home from work. She asked him, why didn't you come when you were called? He replied, if they found me, it wouldn't be okay. But if you found me, Mom, it would be. From then on, the other siblings enjoyed teasing Arlen, telling him he was Mom's favorite, which he was, he said. <laughs> Emma was a kind soul who instilled this quality in her son. He always appreciated her dedication to her family and church. It never failed to surprise the kids on testimony meeting. Emma would faithfully bear her testimony each and every month, expressing gratitude for the many blessings she received. Arlen said all the greening kids would roll their eyes and hide their faces in embarrassment. As children, we were not thrilled with mom on fast, fast and testimony day, not knowing what she would say about each one of us. When we became adults, we all longed to hear her tender voice, excuse me, <laughs> speak strong words of stalwart convictions. Many times, Arlen expressed his love for his mother her sacrifices for him and the family. He always expressed his love for family and friends. Arlen was a very, very social person. He enjoyed talking to people and getting to know them. And I mean anywhere he could strike up a conversation. 
He loved his Tuesday basketball games and get-togethers with Reed Greenwood, Reed Wade, and Jimmy Buckwalter. He loved vacations. When we went to Disneyland, the only condition was that we had to go to Knott's Berry Farm and ride that rickety old roller coaster. Sports. I don't know a sport he didn't like. He loved watching BYU, football and basketball, and jazz games. He was always involved in his grandkids' dance and sport and school activities. He was their biggest fan, always cheering them on. He loved to cook and talk about his National Guard days. Well, at the mortuary yesterday, Alan told me a story about Dad. Alan kind of wanted to shake up a recipe that Dad was making that day at the Guard. Well, several of the Guard members came up to Dad and said, do we have a new cook today? <laughs> because that food was really, really good. Dad was taken back a little bit, and he jokingly said, well, I'm glad you found it so delicious. He always took things in stride and learned to laugh about them. Dad's true military spirit came out when he said to Alan, we really need to follow the recipe next time according to how it's written. Dad was the epitome of stalwartness when it came to his service in the guard. Each Sunday, we would rotate houses, as Chantil said, and enjoy a meal and family time. We would take this opportunity to talk about what had happened the previous week to each one of us and what we were looking forward to doing the upcoming week. Any sports activities he needed to be put, he needed to put on the calendar. He was always, always involved. At these family get-togethers, Dad always had to stand up and invite someone to prayer. He never, ever failed to get a tear in his eye when he expressed his gratitude for his family. He was not afraid to show this side of him. It was not weakness, he said. It was love. Arlen loved to golf and spent many summer hours enjoying the challenge of the local golf courses. He was even game a time or two to try hunting and fishing. Whatever he was involved in, he did it with a zest of humor and fun. He never let a day go by without telling a joke. Why can't a bicycle stand on its own? It's too tired. And everybody laughed at all these jokes. The, the younger kids never grew tired of hearing this joke. Grandpa, tell this joke. Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine, and he'd chase after them playfully. When we think of Arlen, remember a gentle giant, a man with a proud worth and work ethic, love of country, friends, and family. Dad, you will be greatly missed. This part I'd like to dedicate to each family member and their contributions. Mom, Dad truly loves you. You are the love of his life. I never saw a moment go, moment go by that you two were not holding hands, as Connie observed in his last hours. You would always tell each other how grateful you were for each other 
and encourage us to have that same opportunity with our family. When dad couldn't talk anymore, mom would hold his hand and he would often sigh, a sigh of relief, and then he was able to fall asleep. Their love and affection and affection will live on through eternity. Stephen, Dad was so proud of your six years plus of accomplishments and knew that chip means so much to you. Right before Dad died, Stephen came to see him. When I walked over to the side of the bed and told Dad, Dad, Stephen's here. You could tell by the gleam in his eye, he was so glad to see him. Tony, Dad praised you for getting your education. Schooling was important to him. He would tell me about your discussions on politics and world events. Shauna, Dad loved and missed you terribly. Now you're embracing in each other's arms. Stephen Jr., Forrest, Cece, and Cirrus, Grandpa loved each and every one of you. Forrest came to visit Arlen at Point Meadows. Forrest, that meant the world to him to have you come and see him. John, Jennifer, Jacob, Jessica, and Julia. He loved it when you came to visit him at the hospital. He was always so happy when he was invited to any of your special events. Jeff, Marcy, and family. Dad loved being involved with your family also. When you moved out of state, he missed you terribly. Stacy, Kylie, Brielle, Garrett, Malik, and Abby, I couldn't have done it without your help. We are a strong family, and this time of service has strengthened our bonds and made us even closer. I love you and your family and the sacrifices you made to take care of Arlen over the last six months. Todd, Chantil, Casey, Cody, and Korean. Dylan, Sasha, Emmett, Connor, and Brennick. Thank you for supporting me and helping me so I could take care of mom and dad. Some people say to me, how can you do it? And my response is always the same. It is a privilege and an honor to serve your parents, to love and care for them. It is a sacred blessing. I love you, Dad, and will miss you dearly. To read Greenwood, Thanks for coming each week to see Dad. You exhibit the true meaning of true friendship. To the neighbors and friends, you always brighten his day with your visits, letters, and cards. I would like to thank Point Meadows in Lehigh for their excellent care. Courtyard at Jamestown. Your staff was always so pleasant and upbeat. Dad couldn't have picked a nicer place. Thank you for your kind words and always going the extra mile. To Angie and Mark at Ride at Home, thank you for being there when we needed you. Angie, your kindness helped us with Dad's passing. 
You were so sweet and compassionate at our time of grief. Yarrow Hospice, Chaplain Joe, you never failed to comfort Dad when you came to visit him. He so appreciated you. We're grateful that you came and your service today to him. Angie, Peyton, Belinda, and Dave, and many, many wonderful staff and volunteers. When I say we couldn't have done it without you, I truly mean it. You are the epitome of genuine caring, kindness, thoughtfulness, and compassion. We could call you day or night. You were always there to support our family. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you. Just doesn't seem enough to express our heartfelt gratitude we have for each and every one of you. You are true angels. Thank you for all you have done. I'd also like to thank every speaker that has spoken or ha couldn't be here but was here in spirit <coughs> for the beautiful music that Kathleen played. Dad always loved music. For Anderson's Mortuary, and for the opportunity that we had to go and dress him and experience that wonderful spirit of eternity waiting for all of us. Dad, we feel your spirit and we know you're watching over all of us. And I say these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our dear kind Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to have a beautiful service for today for Arlen Greening. Thank you to all of those that have taken time out of their day to show the love that they have for Arlen and Grandma. We ask thee to watch over us, guide us, and protect us. To allow those that have traveled to travel to and from safely. That they may pay their respects, show their love, and also return home safely. We ask thee to give us strength at this time as a family, that we may work together, be there for each other through this tough time, knowing that this is not the end, that one day we will be together again. We love thee. We say these things in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you to all those that spoke. Um, the dedication of the grave will be given by Todd Smith. And will all those rise for the moving of the coffin? 